Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and I am finally back from Spain and I have recovered from jet lag. There were so many devices to see at MWC and there were a lot of bloggers I had a chance to meet, so that was just a blast. And what I want to talk about today is the Xperia Z4 tablet. Unfortunately, Sony did not release the Xperia Z4 for in phone form, although I still hope to see that in the near future. Now, before I get into talking about that tablet a little bit, I really wanted to thank all of you guys who are supporting me currently on patreon.com so, so much. We've hit that $1,000 a month mark, and this is really, really nice and helpful because it's helping me get devices and also helps me now getting to places like MWC. Google has changed their policies with YouTube a little bit and it's making it harder for people to get sponsors. So Patreon is becoming more crucial, I see. So thank you guys so, so much for your support. If you want to check out my Patreon campaign, follow patreon.com slash Erica Griffin. So let's talk about that tablet. So the Xperia Z4 tablet has a keyboard accessory. You do have to pay for that keyboard accessory separately. It looks like Sony is trying to position this tablet and keyboard as kind of like a laptop and productivity replacement. What I do like about that keyboard is that it's really, really nice and light. And even when we have the tablet paired with that keyboard, the whole package feels very nice and light and portable. I did have a good typing experience. I thought that the keyboard was of a good size, although I felt like the keys were a little hollow feeling when typing. The trackpad worked really nice though. So this keyboard lifts out, it's held in place by rubber pads. There are no places on the bottom of the device that this hooks into. It's a Bluetooth keyboard, it's got NFC for pairing and it's got its own rechargeable battery, 430 milliamp hours. I did have some concerns with the rubber pads that were marking up the back of the tablet a little bit. I don't know if this is a prototype issue or if this is something that we're going to be seeing with the real product. I also saw that the backing got marked up pretty easily on the tablet as a whole. It's not glass on the back. It's this satiny feeling type of plastic. So again, this tablet is very, very nice and light. It's got a nice grip and hold in the hand because of the bezels. It's got some pretty nice bezels there. On the front, there's a five megapixel front facing camera. And also we've got front facing stereo speakers. Then if we look at the backside, we can see the Sony branding, the NFC, and there's also a camera on the back, 8.1 megapixels, although you can see that there is no flash. So looking at the white model, I do like the white model better. It's got a satiny feel to it. Then when looking around the device, we have a micro USB charging port on the bottom. Then we've got a volume rocker and power button, then standard headphone jack, and a place for a micro SD card slot. There's a flap. So underneath that flap is the SD card slot and the place for the SIM card. Then we have a microphone, and I noticed that we've got these bumpers on the corners. On the Xperia Z3, they're plastic, but on here, I swear that they, they feel like they're made out of metal, so I'm pretty sure that they're like a stainless steel or something. They're definitely not plastic. So I think that gives it a nice accent. So in terms of specifications, this device has got a Snapdragon 810 SoC inside of it. And it's also got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, so it's going to last you all day. It's also waterproof and dust proof, it's dust tight. When I say waterproof, it means that you can submerge the device down at 1.5 meters for a half hour, so that's pretty convincing. When playing around with the device, it is lollipop. And what I'm happy about is that this is vanilla looking lollipop, which I really appreciate. It's got a Sony flair, but it is vanilla. We even have the ability to have the user profiles. It's got the user profile feature. This is something I feel that a lot of manufacturers skin over and get rid of. Also, when you hit that volume rocker, it brings up the ability to switch to priority mode. This is something that is skinned over on other devices as well. So I really appreciate that it does look very vanilla-like. I will be very excited when my Xperia Z3 gets that lollipop update. I hope that's soon enough because it is T-Mobile, so I don't know when that's going to be. So this is an Xperia device through and through. We've got all the classic Xperia modes. We've got the image enhancement modes. So you've got the option for off, X-Reality, or Super Vivid. 
super vivid mode is exactly as it sounds like. It's going to make everything pop, but it only works underneath gallery and underneath video content, such as YouTube, Netflix, and also onboard video. We've also got the ability to adjust the white balance on this tablet. I noticed that the device is really blue out of the box, but I'm really happy that when you mess around with those sliders, it does change the white balance to being something that looks pretty neutral, at least around D65 looking. And we've also got that power management mode that people love. So when looking at performance, it's got that Snapdragon 810 SoC inside of it, but I did notice that it struggled a little bit in terms of frame rates. When going about the interface, I could see that it's dropping frames here and there. When pulling down the notification shade, I could see that it's dropping frames. So it's not the most smooth device. I would expect more from a tablet like this. It does have that big 10.1 inch display that makes a really nice statement when playing games. But what I saw of the gameplay looked really nice on that really nice vibrant big display and it was pretty smooth, the gameplay. So that display is 299 PPI, 2560 by 1600. It's a Quad HD, what they're calling 2K display and it's got a 1610 aspect ratio. So looking at the camera interface a little bit, I didn't have a chance to take any pictures with this tablet. It's 8.1 megapixels, it's got no flash, and I would assume that the quality would be something like the Xperia Z Ultra, where it's a camera, it works when you need it, but it's probably not the best quality sensor, that it's not something that I would be expecting from a tablet. It's a huge thing to be carrying around and taking pictures with, although I do see people walking around everywhere with iPads taking pictures, so people do do it. It's got that classic Sony camera interface. You do have the camera applications. You've got the AR effect and AR fun modes. You've got several other menus that you can go through and change the settings with the camera. You've got your superior auto mode. You've got your manual mode. So it's all there. So in terms of price and release date, this is something that they did not finalize at MWC, but what I'm hearing is summer, like around June. We've got two different versions of this tablet. There is the Wi-Fi version and the LTE version. Now in Europe, it's nice because the LTE version, it actually has a phone. You can put in your SIM card and you can make phone calls right on your tablet. So that's something that we don't get in the United States. We get data, but no awesome phone call ability. So the Wi-Fi version is going to be cheaper than the LTE version. It looks like the prices are going to be starting at 559 euros. I would guess that would translate into 559 dollars. Now this is without the keyboard. We're probably going to be adding on hundred dollars or so for that keyboard. So this is not a cheap tablet. This is going to be for the Wi-Fi almost $600, you know, with tax. And then you're adding a keyboard as well. And then when you have the LTE version, it's probably going to be uh, $800 nearly in an entire package once you have that keyboard, so not a cheap thing. So overall, I felt that the quality of this device was nice. It was very, very light. It almost felt featherweight, almost cheap because it was so, so light. I honestly thought that that display was just okay. It is nice and vibrant and saturated. And I think it's a tablet that a lot of people are going to like, although I'm really hoping to see some performance increases. So is this a product that I would buy would be the question. Well, I like that it's waterproof. I could sit in the bathtub and I could be watching my Netflix on my large 10.1 inch display. That's, that's really, really nice. It's one that I would like to get in hand and play with. And I really appreciate that it's got that vanilla type lollipop on it. That's something that we're just not seeing with other manufacturers. I wonder if that keyboard is also waterproof. I don't know. I'll have to check into that. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. This was just a very initial first look at this device. Tell me what you think about this so far and if this is something that you would like to purchase. And also if you're excited about the Xperia Z4. So that is all that I want to say for now. Again, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Try patreon.com slash Erica Griffin and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And you can pledge and help me out if you'd like to. My content still is 100% free. It's just if you want to give that little bit of extra help, I would really, really appreciate it. So have a good night, everyone.